why it won't be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning the NFC South division this season. The 2024 Locked On NFL season previews continue right now. This is the 2024 Locked On NFL season preview, only on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the 2024 Locked On NFL season previews. This episode, we are focused on the NFC South. And today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Right now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can put $5 down and get three weeks of free trials of NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I am Ross Jackson, host of the Locked On Saints podcast, and I'll be your host for this division preview. Joining me are my wonderful colleagues from around the NFC South, James Yarko of Locked On Bucks, Aaron Freeman of Locked On Falcons, and Julian Council from over at Locked On Panthers. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the contenders, what makes a successful season for each team, and a, a whole bunch of good stuff from all around the division, uh, including any early host seats, uh, what one thing could be that could derail the expectations for a season, MVP candidates, and much more. We're going to give flowers to each and every team before they enter the season as well and enter that long battle for a division against, of course, each other. Let's get started with the end. Who wins? James, let's start with you as a 2024 NFC South division winning team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, who do you look at as the winner of the NFC South in 2024? I, honestly, it's a two horse race in, in my opinion, but I think the Buccaneers win it again. There's no reason that they shouldn't win it again. They bring in Liam Cohen as the offensive coordinator who has a history with Baker Mayfield. He comes from the Sean McVay tree. Mm -hmm. He's going to put a lot of power in the hands of the, the Buccaneers offensive leaders. And then, you know, you take a look at what they did. Everyone talks about, oh, they're just running it back. Well, if any other team in the NFL had signed Mike Evans, Tristan Wirfs, Antoine Winfield Jr., uh, and Baker Mayfield, and let's go ahead and throw in Jordan Whitehead, they'd be talked about as offseason champs. So mm. this is a team that's been together now. They're comfortable with one another. They're running a similar offense with a couple of little, you know, variations here and there. You add in. Uh, a much better offensive line, which is going to be huge. And, you know, the Buccaneers can go toe to toe with any other team, you know, in this division pretty easily. Yeah. Um, you know, like the New Orleans Saints finished in second place last year, and I, I don't see them finishing in first place this year. I, I just haven't seen anything from this New Orleans Saints team. It's really exciting that they've got this new offense and stuff like that, but I don't feel like their roster has improved. And I don't know if Derek Carr is going to be able to execute the new offense and things like that. So I'm really curious to see how New Orleans finishes, but I don't think they're going to be challenging for first. I think I agree with you, James. I think it's going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers cleaning up again. I, I think that the opportunity to continue when it comes to um, continuity, that there's value in that. There's very much value in keeping a team together, even with a new offensive scheme. Liam Cohen, absolute genius. Very much looking forward to seeing what Tampa's going to be able to do. And I think that they'll finish up at the top of the NFC South. But Aaron, uh, over at Lato Falcons, I feel like you have a different way that you might go with this one because the Falcons <laughs> have had quite an exciting offseason, if we're being honest. That they have, and I'm going to say the thing I said last year on the division preview. Of course, it's going to be the Atlanta Falcons that win the division. That didn't age particularly well a year ago, but it's going to age beautifully this year. You know, you just keep repeating the same takes over and over, and eventually you'll get it right with the Atlanta Falcons finally winning the division, I think, for the first time since, what, 2016 maybe? Mm. So I think the Falcons adding Kirk Cousins, obviously that gives them a lot more stable quarterback play, something that has been sorely missing from this team over the last couple of years. They just picked up a couple of big time defensive pieces in Matthew Judon and Justin Simmons, the pass rusher and safety respectively. That's going to enhance their defense and get it to a respectable level. And with the weapons that they have that, you know, have been much, you know, hyped over the last couple of years that they've used a lot of top 10 picks on with B. John Robinson, and Drake London and Kyle Pitts and Pitts is healthy this year. And, all those things, and you have Zach Robinson. I think that probably all these teams in the NFC South have new offensive coordinators. Everybody's mm -hmm. kind of excited about what their guy is going to bring to the table. But, you know, maybe I'm biased, but I'm particularly more excited about what Zach Robinson is going to bring to Atlanta, bringing that Sean McVay style offense uh, to Atlanta. 
Uh, and I think he's going to be able to maximize all the pieces that the Falcons have acquired this offseason. And that will give the Falcons, you know, that leg up going into week 18 where they have to play the Carolina Panthers uh, and, you know, have to get a win in your end sort of situation. And, you know, knowing the Falcons, you can't trust them in those situations. But <laughs> this year they will finally pull it off and they will emerge victorious uh, in the NFC South. Yeah. Uh- I love what the Atlanta Falcons did. They went out and they got a great quarterback this offseason. Unfortunately for them, timing-wise, they signed Kirk Cousins first, but I'm excited to see what <laughs> uh, Julian Council, Locked on Panthers, how do you see this division shaking out at the top? Yeah, I agree with James. And uh, you guys are saying this is probably going to be a two-horse race between Tampa and Atlanta this season. Um, I do like what Atlanta's done, bringing in Kirk Cousins. He's probably the best quarterback in this division. Now, that's not necessarily saying that much, uh, considering Derek Carr. He's had his struggles back when he was with the Raiders and so far his first year also down in New Orleans. I love what Baker Mayfield was able to do last season with Dave Canales as his play caller. And the fact that he does have that relationship with Liam Cohen dating back to their time, brief time, Back with the Rams, that should help the transition there as he's now seemingly, I guess, their quarterback for I, I, the next couple of years. I don't know how long term that's going to be. Mm-hmm. I, I think Kirk's the best, though. And I, there's a lot of enticing pieces there on that offense. Love it. Uh, let's take a look at our friends over at FanDuel. They have over unders in terms of win totals for each of these teams. Uh, Julian, if you don't mind, let's stick with you and the Carolina Panthers here. Uh, over under five and a half wins. What's your expectation for this Carolina Panthers team? Uh, expectations not to be two and 15 again. Uh, I think that should be fair. Um, sure. I, I still expect this team to likely be drafting in the top five, top 10 of the NFL draft, which honestly wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. They still have a lot of needs, especially defensively looking at the pass rush. It was terrible last year and they got rid of Brian Burns and Frankie Louvu and they brought in Genevieve on Clowney. And right now, DJ one, I'm not quite sure when he's going to play again. I think they're going to mm-hmm. take a step back defensively. But you can question whether they're taking a step back after all the injuries they had last year. Anyway, it's kind of hard to evaluate how good that defense really was. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I've been telling people ask me, well, how many wins do you think? It's like, well, five and a half. That's their number. It sounds about right. And I just tell people, what if they tripled their win total? I mean, if you say six and 11, that doesn't sound that enticing. You say triple your win total. That sounds pretty good. So uh, it's, it's hard to trust this team and go over to six wins. I do think they're better up front on the offensive line. I don't know necessarily if they need to spend a hundred million dollars on Robert Hunt and $69 million on Damian Lewis. Their problem last year was the fact that Austin Corbett was never healthy and Brady Christensen got hurt in week one and they had no depth. And that's a problem for what 27 out of the 32 teams in the NFL when it comes to Mm -hmm. offensive line depth. So if they have injuries again this year, they're going to struggle and they're just going to be paying those guys a lot more to be on IR than they were paying the guys last season. And you know, skill position wise, they have another receiver. They only had one last year. Now they have two with Deontay Johnson, but it's still thin. If they, if one of those guys goes down, I don't love the skill core outside of those two guys at wide receiver running back. They should be able to run the football, especially with the offensive line additions. And I just think being better up front, on the offensive line, I think they'll be better against the run this year, defensive line-wise, but they're not going to get after the passer. I, I could go either way, but I, I would probably go with the under. We'll go at 5 and 12 this year. I, I'm not super confident in it seems ability to get off the field and yeah. their ability to really be that high caliber of a passing offense this year. Makes sense. Uh, let's take a look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, uh, James, this was, this was probably pretty easy. I mean, many of us are picking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to win the division, but yet they're over under set at seven and a half. Uh, you got to be taking the over on this, right? Oh, hammer the over. <laughs> uh, and, and I've said on Locked On Bucks, I feel like if this team stays healthy, and, and that's the biggest thing for all these teams, right? They have to stay healthy. But if this team stays healthy, I feel like their ceiling is 11 wins. I feel like this could be a mm. team that goes 11 and six. I feel like their floor, barring, again, like Tristan Wirfs or Baker Mayfield going down, I feel like their floor is eight. You know, mm-hmm. they they could, you know, couple, you know, the ball doesn't bounce their way a couple of times. They could fall below 500, but still finish at eight and nine, which won the division two years ago. Uh, I don't think it wins the division this year, but, you know, I, I kind of feel like that's the range they're in. I feel like they're probably going to finish the year out 10 and seven uh, a one game improvement over over last year with all the additional weapons and and Liam Cohen there and all that so yeah at seven and a half this is this is back-to-back years now that the odds makers have drastically underrated the Buccaneers in the uh in the over under 
Yeah. Uh, Aaron, the Falcons right now over with their friends at FanDuel are at nine and a half. They might not need to hit the over to win the division, but will they? I would have said two weeks ago, no, they probably won't hit the over uh, at nine and a half. I would have probably predicted them to win eight or nine games. But then with the additions of Judon and Simmons, I think it gets their defense to a respectable enough level where they actually will stop people. Right. The the Mm -hmm. thing with the Falcons is it's it's not new to have a good quarterback in Atlanta. It's not new to have dynamic skill position players in Atlanta. What is new in Atlanta is having a competent defense. And until the Falcons picked up those two players a week ago uh, in mid-August, it was one of those situations where it's like, I don't think they're going to have a good defense. And it's going to be the same thing that caused them to miss the playoffs, even when they had Matt Ryan and Julio Jones for multiple years, because they can't really stop anybody. So now that they've picked up those guys, I'm willing to take the over on nine and a half. I think they probably get the 10 wins. Obviously, if they can do that, that's probably going to win the division, although I'm sure everybody would love to again see an NFC South where you get multiple teams getting to double digit wins and multiple Mm -hmm. teams in a wild card. So this division can get a little bit more respect back that they've lost over the last couple of years with some, uh, you know, less than uh, stellar and and not very top heavy uh, performances from these teams. So I, I would go the over right now with the Falcons, but it was it was looking, you know, pretty tough to to get to that level uh, mm-hmm. until they made these recent additions on defense. Yeah, absolutely. And those additions, by the way, for anybody who missed it, Matthew Judon, the uh, elite edge rusher from the uh, New England Patriots. And then, of course, Justin Simmons, who got a free dinner in Orange County, California, from the New Orleans Saints before signing with the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, as for the New Orleans Saints, seven and a half is their over under, which typically is the Vegas. We don't know what to do with this team kind of line. That's why I'm surprised to see Tampa in that range. Uh, I don't know if I'm equally honest. I would love to say that the Saints floor is eight wins because they won nine last year and they shouldn't be any worse than they were last year but they might be i i love the new system and the offensive coordinator and what he's bringing because it's creative it's fun it's uh new it's fresh it's all these other things but will the saints be able to execute it it took them 11 weeks last week to get their uh far less complicated offense uh under their belt is that going to be the case again here in 2024 if so under right they could be a seven win team uh but if they're able to get it off the ground a little bit faster and maybe steal some of these early complicated games that i could see them coming in under uh i could really go either way on this but uh, i think the big thing for me is that uh I would probably be more willing to take the under than the over at this point. I might change my mind after week one, but who doesn't? Coming up next, we're going to take a look at much more when it comes to the NFC South because we're just getting started. Coming up, we're going to be taking a look at the one thing that could derail the success of each of these team seasons. It's the 2024 Locked On NFL Season Preview of the NFC South. This NFC South Division preview is brought to you by friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is the same formula that will help you keep your ride or die alive. At over at eBay Motors, they've got everything that you need to be able to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for at ebaymotors.com and with ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash for all the parts that you need at the prices that you want ebay motors makes it easy to make your car an mvp and bring home some huge wins keep your ride or die alive today by visiting ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply and ebay guaranteed fit available only to u.s customers The 2024 Locked On NFL season preview continues. A reminder, you can get coverage of your favorite NFL team by subscribing to their Locked On podcast. We also have the NFL covered nationally with Locked On NFL, Locked On NFL Scouting, Peacock and Williamson, and of course, your fantasy coverage at Locked On Fantasy Football, Locked On Dynasty Football, and of course, you can check out Locked On NFL Draft as well. Get 24-7 coverage of the NFL with our brand new Locked On NFL 24-7 stream, streaming always free on YouTube and Amazon Fire. 
TV. All right, let's go back to division finish order from 2023 here and take a look at our next category, which is going to be uh, what we expect from each of these teams and what can derail them. James, what is your expectation for the Bucks and what could get in the way? I mean, I fully expect this team to compete in each and every game. They have a really tough schedule to open up the year. You, you know, you get the commanders, but then you have to face Detroit. You have three primetime games in five weeks. You have the Eagles. You have the Chiefs. You have divisional matchups. You have the 49ers on the road. It, it's it's tough. Then after the bye week, things open up a little bit. You could see a run like they had last year where they go through a little bit of a slump that all of a sudden they rattle off you know, seven wins in a row and, and find themselves in the playoffs. So I do expect them to be to be competitive, even with some of these top tier teams. But ultimately, what can really throw everything off and they end up hitting that under that we just talked about is the edge rush. You no longer have Shaq Barrett in the building. He went to the Dolphins and then he retired. You you brought in Randy Gregory to be part of this rotation. He never showed up and he's no longer with the team. So you're pinning a lot of hopes and dreams on a second year player in Yaya Diaby who didn't really even see the field until the second half of last year and still led the team in sacks. Then you have a second round pick in Chris Braswell, who's going to get some time. Jose Ramirez has just absolutely exploded in preseason. He and Marquise Watts were guys that the Bucs were really high on, but you don't have that marquee guy. And if they right. can't get an edge rush going against some of these top tier quarterbacks that they have to face, you're you're pinning a lot of pressure on Zion McCollum, Jamel Dean, Jordan Whitehead, and a rookie in Tyke Smith as as guys that have to cover some elite wide receivers so that edge rush has to get home yeah that's huge uh for the new orleans saints i think my expectation is for this team to have a really 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 good defense again uh and maybe even better than the one that they had last year they finished in the 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 20s bottom third of the league when it came to run defense in 2023 i expect them to take a step forward for just about any game in 2024 that's not playing against Bijan robinson and the atlanta falcons i think that will be the one exception there uh but uh, I just really think that this defense will take steps forward. The addition of Chase Young has looked really, really good in training camp so far. I was out on the West Coast while they were out there watching. These guys looked really good on the defensive line. Can they stay healthy? Well, that's where we get to what will derail that expectation this season. Uh, I, I think that health has been a major major issue for this team already. I mean, there's a couple of guys. There's one player, Kendra Miller, their, their running back, second-year running back they drafted last year in 2023, that – participated in like some of individual drills the first day of training camp and has not been able to get back out on the practice field ever since individual drills individual drills and that was it and like we there's one dude that had uh surgery on a fractured foot and he's back and that's tied in juan johnson and so like there's big question marks in terms of things like that lots of starters dealing with injury so on and so forth so i think that that's always going to be the thing that's going to derail any team i understand that but for the new orleans saints they're kind of already trending in that direction and that's not great uh aaron what about you expectations for the falcons and what can derail them well my expectations for the falcons are similar to what james talked about with the box they're going to be in every game every game is probably going to be a one score game as we often see in this league and ultimately you know it's going to be who's the team that makes the plays in the final five minutes i think the falcons now adding kirk cousins getting some help on the defensive side of the ball that gives them a big leg up in those situations so i'm hoping that the falcons will be able to win a lot of games uh these one score games these tight games uh late in the game with their offense with the firepower that they're going to have on the offensive side of the ball and getting some critical stops uh, against some opponents. And that's going to allow them uh, to come away with that winning record. But I think as you guys have stated, it's the same issues for a lot of these teams in the same division. Injuries are a concern for the Falcons. They do not have the world's greatest depth at a lot of key positions, especially on the skill positions on the offensive line, uh, sure. you know, in the deep on in, in the secondary and whatnot. So those things can derail them. I think, the, the concern I have is similar to what James expressed with the, the Falcon schedule. They have the easiest schedule according to various metrics and statistics, but mm -hmm. the schedule makers didn't do them any favors by scheduling arguably some of their five hardest opponents right out of the gates. No offense to Carolina, who they play in week six. Uh, but you have you know Pittsburgh week one, Philadelphia week two, Monday night football, Kirk Cousins primetime, Eagles, I mean, I'm sorry, oh. Chiefs Sunday night week three. You have New Orleans at home at week four, then you have Thursday night against uh, the Bucks. And if the Falcons take a, a couple of weeks, Kirk Cousins hasn't really been in preseason games. And so, 
you know, he's not necessarily known for the fastest starts with all the primetime games at the beginning of the season. If they get a little bit behind the eight ball in terms of the record, everybody's just assuming, oh, the schedule's going to soften up in the back half and they'll be able to get their groove and, and rattle off some wins and, and build that sort of momentum like James was talking about what the Bucks did last year. But what happens if injuries sort of derail that and all of a sudden your team can't necessarily go out there and put their best foot forward later in the season as those injuries accumulate? And so I think the Falcons really need to get off to a fast start. And if they don't do that, that opens them up for another disappointing season. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Carolina is an interesting one, Julian. What's the expectation in Carolina right now and, and, and what gets in the way? Um, to be competent on offense, right. that would be nice. Um, I guess that's my <laughs> expectation. Uh, Dave Canales has talked a lot about getting the football right. So what does that mean? Don't fumble the ball. Don't throw interceptions. Uh, don't be undisciplined. They played a game last year in Seattle where they had seven false starts. How does an NFL team have seven full stars? Like, this is the NFL. Yeah. None of these places are loud. You're not playing at LSU. You're not playing at Ohio State. Like, these stadiums, they're, they're not loud like that to where you should be having those issues. Also, you're professionals. And it's just unacceptable for that to be an issue that they had last season. So, that's just competence generally on offense, what I'm expecting to see from them. I mean, win totals, not super caught up in that. I feel like this year's a lot like last year where evaluating Bryce Young is the most important thing. They gave up a ton to get him. Uh, they don't have DJ Moore anymore, who could have helped him last year. He's now in Chicago. We know what the Bears got, number one overall, Caleb Williams, and the Panthers have a question of whether this is the right guy. So mm. not really worried about how many games to win, how many games to lose. What does yeah. Bryce Young look like? And Dave Canales is here to get Bryce Young to play competent, but really above average football this year and beyond and show that he is the right guy. So what can derail the Panthers being competent? The same thing that derails him seemingly every other year is the offensive line injuries and just the offensive line not living up to any sort of expectations. And I do think that this year, with Brady Christensen, who was a starter in the past, being a backup now, being their sixth offensive lineman, and then bringing in Josh Nyman as their swing tackle, who currently is on pup and don't really know when he's going to be available. But if those two guys can stay healthy behind the starters, they at least have seven guys that they can depend on. And that can also be derailed if. Nyman's never back healthy and they lose two or three offensive linemen. And that would be a problem for any team in the league as this is a line of scrimmage game. I know people get caught up in the quarterback Well, the quarterback didn't have a chance last year because the O-line was banged yeah. up and the receivers couldn't get open. And when they got open, they couldn't catch. And if they caught it, they did nothing with it. So yeah, general competency would be something that I'm expecting and what could derail it. Well, what derails every team injuries. Yep. Yeah, that's always that's always gonna be a thing, uh, gentlemen. I think we can have the shortest conversation on this next topic than any other locked on NFL division preview. Because what we're set to discuss next is NFC South MVP candidates, and understanding that the MVP award is mostly just the best quarterback award, as Julian was talking about earlier before we started recording. Uh, are there any NFC South MVP candidates? Period. Only guy it could be would be Kirk Cousins it, with those it's weapons. If he just if he goes off, that's the only way I can see it. I guess Baker could be in that category too. But I mean, I feel like yeah. the voters are biased against him anyway. So Kirk Cousins would be the one who would get the the opportunity. Yeah, for, you know, we're just being honest. Yeah, I will say this: I I don't expect Kirk Cousins or any quarterback to to be a serious candidate for the MVP. The one thing I will say, the caveat, the asterisk I would put is maybe B. John Robinson can be Agreed. offensive player of the year type yeah. of candidate which basically goes through the best non-quarterback on uh offense and so that's the one <laughs> that's the one example of a player that could have a, an incredible year and you know put up 2,000 all-purpose yards have a Christian McCaffrey type of mm -hmm. season that's the hope you know every Falcon fan is, is hoping for that and if you've ever watched Bijan play football for five seconds, you, you see the potential there. Can't wait. All right, look, we're about to enter a grueling 17-game season and an 18-week season, including the bye week, uh, where all of the teams that we cover, we're going to want them to come out on top. But before that battle begins, we give some flowers to the other teams. It's the 2024 Locked On NFL Season Preview of the NFC South. This NFC South Division preview brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, and the only sportsbook that you need to be checking out for your NFC South Division odds. Right now, of course, of course, the FanDuel folks have 
the Atlanta Falcons favored right now to win the division, uh, minus 145 to win the division. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers come in second place at plus 290. The New Orleans Saints, a distant third at plus 550. And the Carolina Panthers, an impossible fourth at plus 1100. But hey, if you're feeling spicy on any of those, FanDuel is absolutely the place to go to get in on the action. And right now is the absolute best time to do that because now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers will bet $5 and can get a free three-week trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. With your YouTube TV base plan, that means you're going to be able to watch every single regular season out-of-market Sunday afternoon game for those three weeks. All you need is a Google account, a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started and download America's number one sportsbook. The 2024 Locked On NFL season previews continue. A reminder, you can continue to get coverage of your favorite NFL team by subscribing to their Locked On podcast. We also have uh, the NFL covered nationally with Locked On NFL, Locked On NFL Scouting, Locked On NFL Draft, Peacock and Williamson, Locked On Fantasy Football and Dynasty Football as well for all of you fantasy players. And you can get 24-7 coverage with the NFL or on the NFL with our brand new Locked On NFL 24-7 live stream free on uh, YouTube and Amazon Fire TVs. All right, guys, time to give each other some flowers. What is it that you would want to give the other team some flowers on? It could be a specific team, a specific player. It could be their defensive scheme. It could be their defense, their offense, their head coach, whatever it is. Uh, let's start off with you, Julian. Who would you like to give some flowers to and why? I'll give flowers to Baker Mayfield for the way he played last year. I know the yeah. year prior in Carolina, I never felt like they put him in a position to succeed when you don't trade for him until July 5th and he doesn't get the playbook until a week before training camp. What do you expect? I mean, obviously he's still gonna be better than Sam Darnold, but come on, man. Like he was never in a situation where he was going to succeed and for him to get last year, have that opportunity, have the competition with Kyle Trask. Like, come on. Uh, I thought it was awesome to see how well he played. I've always been a fan of that guy since he was at Texas tech as a true freshman walk on. So really cool to see him in a position where he gets paid and hoping that uh, Bryce Young can do, can I, David Canales can do the same thing for Bryce Young as he's done for Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield the past two years. Aaron Freeman. Uh, and we also can't get flowers to Bijan Robinson because we've already done it enough uh, during this episode. So James, that takes Bijan Robinson off the board for you and I, Aaron, how would you, who, who would you like to give flowers to and why? New Orleans Saints, you know, Cam Jordan, you know, even though he's cooked, even though he's washed, you know, he's still <laughs> keeping the, the rivalry alive. So I appreciate and respect that man that even though his best football playing days are long gone, he is keeping up his end of the bargain. James, what about you, bud? Who would you like to give flowers to? Uh, I'm going to start with Raheem Morris. And and look, yeah. Raheem Morris, former head coach of the Buccaneers, and, and I know I joked around about how you should find someone that loves you the way Raheem Morris loves overdrafting quarterbacks in the first round. Um, you know, his first draft pick with Tampa was Josh Freeman, and it, it, it wasn't a great one. And then Atlanta could have done so much to help, but they got Penix. Who knows what's going to happen with Kirk Cousins? 36 coming off a, a ruptured Achilles. But to see the path that Raheem Morris took from the younger Bucks and the surprise 10 and 6 to just absolutely imploding and being terrible, and then having to start all the way down at the bottom again and work his way all the way up to get this opportunity again. I could not be more excited for a guy that deserved it more than Raheem Morris. Uh, I wish him the best kind of, um, you know, all, all things considered uh, as far as the Panthers are concerned, I, I would like to give some flowers to Dave Canals. And mm -hmm. I, I said on locked on bucks that if, if he got offered the Panthers job, he probably shouldn't take it but that he would because there's only 32 of these. You only get so many opportunities. And while I didn't think it was a great situation because of ownership for him to have his first head coaching job, who knows? You know, I hope it doesn't go the path of Raheem where he has to go back to the bottom and, and he's not going to get another chance for another decade. He's such a genuinely nice dude. He, he really is. And I'm excited to see if he really can turn Bryce Young around because he's he's had success. Julian, you talked about it with Baker, with Gino. Uh, I absolutely, you know, I, I hope he finds success. And again, he deserved it. You know, he deserved that opportunity for what he's done the last couple of years. I'll go right to Tampa because I, I, mine is the safety in Tampa, Antoine uh, Winfield Jr. I mean, just incredible. And I'm so excited that they were able to get everything done and be able to keep him and, and get all that taken care of and everything like that. I just think he's an outstanding player. His 
ability to have grown from somebody that might have been looked at as more of like a one dimensional run support type guy into an elite coverage guy. I mean, just outstanding. You don't see a lot of safeties in today's NFL able to make that transition. One per here, rookies on your teams from, from this year's rookie class, obviously, uh, that will make the biggest impact or you're expecting the biggest impact. James, what you got? Oh, that's, that's tough. Uh, I'm going to say Jalen McMillan and okay. you know, he, an absolute studable wide, studable wide, wide receiver, receiver. Yep. um, out of Washington, had he not been injured, he might've been, he might've been the second receiver from Washington drafted, uh, mm -hmm. definitely would have gone before the end of the third round. But one of the things that this team was lacking so much last year was a number three wide receiver. It was supposed to be yeah. Russell Gage. He gets hurt in training camp and he, he doesn't participate. Now you have Jalen McMillan, who is an absolute stud. He He's a contested catch guy. He is a refined route runner and he has the benefit of having Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. So now Baker all of a sudden has the opportunity to really expose some weaknesses in these defenses when they try to, you know, focus all their attention on Mike and Chris. Now there's a legitimate threat. It's not just Trey Palmer. Right. It's not Devin Tompkins. It's not, uh, you know, Kate Otten, God love him. It's, it's a tried and true wide receiver that could be a number two. If Chris Godwin leaves as a free agent after the season. So McMillan's going to be a, a guy that is going to turn some heads this year. Love that. Uh, going over to Carolina. Is it the wide receiver for that draft class too? Or you go a different direction, Julian. Oh, yeah. I mean, Leggett has not been healthy. He had a hamstring right. back in the spring. Then he had a foot injury uh, early on in training camp, has not played in the preseason. I think he actually would have played. And mm -hmm. even when he was healthy, I haven't seen enough from him to have that high expectations. And I was not the biggest fan of the pick. Did nothing for four years and exploded last year at South Carolina. Like, kudos. People made a lot of excuses, which also reasons why it took that long. Uh, it's hard. I, I, like Brooks right now, the running back they took out of Texas, Jonathan Brooks, he's probably going to start the season on Pup. And he tore his ACL back in November, and they have mm -hmm. Chuba Hubbard and Miles Sanders running to the ground. So they don't really need to utilize him that much, and that seems like a pick for 2025. Uh, Trevin Wallace is the linebacker they really like out of Kentucky in the third round. He's actually, I think, going to get on the field. So I would have to say him. And uh, Tavion Sanders maybe, but no, nah, I think it's a lot to expect out of a, a rookie tight end. Mm -hmm. So I would say Trevin Wallace, and that's not something I would have said back in the spring, just based off of Lee Gett not really making any headways, and he's been kind of banged up, and then Brooks, yeah. no clue when he's going to play. So I would say Trevin Wallace, even though he's going to be behind Shaq Thompson and Josie Jewell, I do think he's going to get opportunities and probably make the biggest impact out of the rookies. Now, Panther fans are hoping it's going to be Lee Gett. Sure. I don't know. They've, they've talked a lot about Johnson being their, their guy, and then obviously we know what Thielen did last year. I don't think he's going to have that big of an impact, even when he's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really good analysis in that. I love that that deep dive into the rookie class. That was excellent. Uh Aaron, what about you for the Falcons? I mean, the Falcons really aren't expecting a whole lot from the rookies. Michael Penix kind of embodies this of he's going to sit the bench for 2 years. They have some right. guys that will contribute on special teams. They have some guys that will be some of the back in defensive line rotational pieces, right? But the one player that they were really kind of counting on to contribute this year out of their rookie draft class was Braylon Trice, their third round uh, outside linebacker oh, right. from Washington, and he suffered a torn ACL in that first preseason game, so he's out for the season. So really, like, their most impactful rookie is maybe going to be Ruka Roro, their hmm. second-round pick. Like, he's going to – he's probably going to play like 15 snaps a game. So it's, it's not like he's going to have like a huge impact. He's probably like the seventh or eighth guy in their D-line rotation. So it's like, yeah, man, this rookie class is, you know, th this draft class is really a 2025, 2026 draft class. Uh, and, and Penix really embodies that. So I don't know if there's a whole lot of expectations for any of these rookies outside of maybe making a couple of key special teams tackles on, on the new dynamic kickoff and, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, for New Orleans, I think it's first round offensive tackle out of Oregon State. It's Taliesi Fuonga. I mean, especially the fact they drafted and moved him from right tackle to left tackle, making him the blindside guy. He's the guy that has to have the biggest impact for this team. It's an offense that wants to be predicated on its run game. It's an offensive line that needs to improve from what it did last year. All these other things. I think he's got to be the one, Taliesi Fuonga, to be the uh, big 
uh, kind of name out of this draft class in 2024. We'll see what happens with Spencer Rattler in the future. I think a lot of Saints fans would like for him to be the one to make the biggest impact this year, uh, but that's just not going to happen. And so we'll see where things end up for him in the future. But I think it's Telly S.E. Fulanga for now. All right, let's wrap up with a look at division finish across uh, our shows here and across our hosts here, uh, just from one to four, nice and easy. We've spent the last several minutes laying out the reasons why. Uh, Aaron, let's start with you. What do you think the division finishes for the NFC South in 2024? Well, you know, I'm going to take the Homer pick. I'm going to take the Atlanta first place, second Thank place, you. Tampa Bay, third place, New Orleans, and fourth place, Carolina. All right. Julian, where do you see it going? Yeah, I was going to take the Homer pick. I... No. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Atlanta, I think, will win the division, uh, followed by Tampa, who I think will be a playoff team as well, New Orleans, and then Carolina. Gotcha. Uh, James, getting a lot of love so far, even as second place, but still a playoff team, but you see it another way, I'm sure. Yeah, I have Tampa, Atlanta, New Orleans, Carolina, and and it could be as simple as Tampa and Atlanta tie, and, and sure. it just goes down to a tiebreaker, but I, I think this is you know another division title for the Bucs. Yeah, yeah. I'm going um, Tampa, the division champs, until they're not. Uh, I'll say Atlanta. I'll say New Orleans, and then Carolina. I think we're all kind of looking at it the same way, except for the the the, the swap uh, at the top uh, for uh, for James and I. Except for the uh, two Tampa. homer picks. What you're saying? I didn't make a homer pick. <laughs> I'm talking about. Oh, oh you guys are the homer picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all are the homer picks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's where we go. I wouldn't it's be surprised by the way. Be the only to pick against their team. <laughs> I I like the I like the way that uh, I I could also go so far as to say that Atlanta and Ta and, and New Orleans will tie, but Atlanta will win uh, the tiebreaker. But I won't go that far because I'm I'm not really sure I could even convince myself uh, of that. So I can't even go that far on the Albert pick. All right, y'all. We appreciate you very much for being here. For our friends, Julian Council of Locked On Panthers, Aaron Freeman of Locked On Falcons, James Yarko of Locked On Bucks, myself, Ross Jackson of Locked On Saints, we very much appreciate you being here with us for this NFC South 2024 Locked On NFL season preview. We thank you very much for listening. And of course, uh, if you want to hear more about the divisions and how they'll play out all around the NFL this year, subscribe to Locked On NFL wherever you get your podcasts. Part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.